And I've started checking myself because if I'm flattering, I'm usually trying to grease the skids mm -hmm. to make them like me, to make, to get something. Encouragement and flattery feel totally different. Yes. Totally different. Encouragement comes from a heart that I find my identity and contentment in Christ. So I'm sincerely saying mm -hmm. I had to pull the sunroof back and raise my hands out when I was listening to you worship in the car. That's not flattery. Right. Um, but I, I, I feel like that's part of me maturing and being less of a people person is to go, when am I coming at somebody with flattery to get them to like me or get something I want? And when am I sincerely saying, thank you for birthing the man of my dreams, which I hope one day actually to get to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been a Christian as long as I can remember, but I don't, I wasn't a serious one <laughs> until God touched my life back in the 70s during the outpouring of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that we often refer to as the charismatic movement. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going to a, a church, the denominational church that Dave grew up in, and I always wanted to be important because I felt bad about myself. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be important, I wanted to lead. And so there was this one woman that kind of was the woman that if you want to be in the in crowd, you've got to be in with her. <laughs> and I look back now and when I think, it, it just makes me almost want to throw up <laughs> the way that I catered mm -hmm. to her mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. was so unauthentic mm -hmm. with her mm -hmm. because I would just, make on over her and call her every day and compliment her and anything that, you know, she wanted me to do, I would do. And sure enough, I got what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I got in with the in crowd. Dave was an elder in the church. And, you know, we were always invited to all the parties and yada, 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 yada. But the thing is, when you get a relationship with that way, that's what you got to do yeah. to keep it. Yeah, there's no foundation. Yeah. And so yeah. eventually it becomes exhausting uh -huh. mm -hmm. and you get so fed up <laughs> with falling all over this person that you really can't even hardly stand. <laughs> and uh, then when God did touch my life and I was called to teach, mm -hmm. all these people that I thought were my friends were the first ones to turn against me and tell me, you know, we just... If the, well, if this is what you're going to do, then we can't have anything to do with you. So all my people pleasing didn't really get me any friends. Mm -hmm. It just an exercise right. in exhaustion. Wow. And I pretty much don't have a problem anymore with people pleasing except with my children. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's not that they try to make me be a people pleaser. It's, I do it all on my own. Mm -hmm. And so I can talk about people pleasing because I know. And then I also found in my life as an adult that anytime I ran across somebody that had a personality like my father's, mm -hmm. I would go into that same right. routine again. Right. Wow. If they were real strong and abrasive and aggressive and had a quick temper, mm -hmm. I would quickly become the people nice. pleaser because... I just didn't want anybody mad at me. Right. You know, I lived in so much right. anger when I was right. growing up right. that I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, even if two of my kids aren't getting along, I can't stand it until everything is, you know, peaceful yeah. again. Yeah. And I'm so far behind as far as spiritual maturity, but I am walking behind you. I'm grateful that you've made the path yeah. because what you're saying is what God continues to teach me. And I've realized that Peace with God has nothing to do with the approval of other people. No. That's right. And um, one of the best things he has allowed me to do was I was on a national tour for a little while, a Christian women's conference, and I was on tour with Lisa Welchel. Yes. I think y'all all know mm -hmm. Lisa Welchel. <laughs> yeah. She's on Facts of Life, a TV show. you probably too godly to watch it, Miss Joyce. But <laughs> anyway, she was a, a sitcom star mm -hmm. yeah. for years when I, we were the same age. But we, Lisa is teeny tiny, about your size, petite, beautiful, blonde, but we have a real similar shaped head and smile. Mm -hmm. And so nobody was coming to where I'm, you know, people are lined up to buy books to see Lisa Harper. They thought I was Lisa Welchel. <laughs> and I cannot tell you how many thousands, literally, of women I'd go, 
I'm sorry, no. because they'd stood in line for 45 <laughs> minutes thinking they're meeting Lisa Welchel because I had a, a big grin and a big head. Uh-huh. And I was like, I'm so sorry. She's on the other side of the arena. Well, they wouldn't be able to get there because you know, the break was only so long. Yeah. And it was the most lovely thing to go almost all the time that I was out there, I was displeasing people. But I still got to be pre- present and hug on them and love on them. And sometimes they'd be like, well, will you sign it anyway? It was like, I was totally the consolation prize. But there was such a sweetness to it because I found myself going, you know, I don't ever want to have a sense of entitlement That's right. with people clapping or, or approving of what I do. I want to go, man, if I get to do this, yeah. I want to bring yeah. my whole heart to the table. But I, if there's a laugh track or a boo track, that doesn't matter. Is God smiling at wow, me? Wow, that's so good. And Joyce, I love what you said too about you could be almost stealing someone else's yes. Yeah, that's so Like that yeah. was so good. Like if you're t- kind of taking them when you don't feel called into right. it. Um, and I also think everyone got a pretty good deal coming up and giving your smile <laughs> right. and like you bless right. their day. I, I would have been like, sweet. Um, I think by, I'll be really honest. I feel like I, I think I have such an out loud people pleaser way about me that it almost is more inside where I deal with um, what I call FOLPD, fear of letting people down. Mm. It's not that I won't please them. I said I will. I almost make myself so. I must make myself so super necessary. <laughs> you know, like I'm. Yeah, yeah. The utility That's player yeah. here, and if I don't do this, this whole thing's gonna. Everyone's right. gonna be let down. Like, right. And it's got to be just so self-centered. I'm like, I was confess it. Like, do I think I'm that necessary? Oh God. Really? I love it. So oh, I just yeah. think I get a, that just, this kind of came to me right now. It's not even whatever. <laughs> it's not a part but, <laughs> but I do think it's that snare in Proverbs. This is, I did write down, fear of man leaves a yeah. snare, but whoever trusts right. in the Lord is safe. Yeah. And it's like, I must not trust that God, you, mm. if I say no, or even if I mess up, I think it's because yeah. I still have a lot of yeses and I'm working to like shift over to mm. like, can I let you know the no tomorrow instead? <laughs> I don't want to let you down. F-O-L-P-D across yeah. my t-shirt. But I do think... It's that feeling of, um, God, you will take care of this and you will supply all that's needed for the next person who has the yes that you want to offer them in this. And you're not going to, um, he's saying to me, stop creating idols out of the people around you. That's right. You know, I did it for so long. Betsy is watching my mother-in-law, so I'm going to talk about it. I could have had a sweet spot of five years, I think, with her where I was so intent on not letting my mother-in-law down that I didn't, I didn't approach her mm. without fear of like, I wanted to prove to her all the time that I was this amazing wife to Tim, mm-hmm. that she loved on him so well, that I was, he, he was gonna be in the best hands. And I, in my most like confessed version, I think I just, and I, God has multiplied those minutes so well since uh, the day I decided to not idolize her, mm. but just hug her as my sister in Christ who mm. raised the man of my dreams. And that I was going to probably let her down sometimes. I was going right. to mess things up. Right. But I, I needed to stop making her my idol because that's God's job description. Yeah, that's I, right. He is, he that's is right. sovereign. He's over everything. And right. there's nothing I can do to get out of his love, like nothing. But right. I was giving her that position. Mm-hmm. And it has been so much more sweet. And I think that so many women struggle with that because they place this woman that they just yeah. love and honor yeah. where they're not supposed to be. Sweet. And she's... She birthed the man of my dreams, raised him to love me so well. And I idolized her for that, but that's not what God was asking me to do. So I operated in this fear of letting her down for so many years. And now our relationship is so sweet because I'm like, I'm not idolizing you anymore. (laughs) I'm actually not afraid to let you down. I don't want to, I want to honor you. But I, Betsy and I have this sweet relationship now. We're sisters. Well, it's interesting that you almost came all the way back to what Joyce started with, talking about the woman who was the yeah. gatekeeper yes. at the church when you were younger and how you just did everything you could. Mm. And when both of y'all were talking, I thought it reminds me of, of First Thessalonians, you know, where Paul says, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak mm. not to please man, but to please God mm-hmm. who test our hearts for we never came with words of flattery. And I used to love the second part of that verse because it says that, that we loved you as a mother loves her children. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that's what I identify with. I want to kind of mother the people I get to minister with. And I used to ignore the first part of that, of that passage. And then I go, 
Lisa, how often do you come at other people with flattery? And I've started checking myself because if I'm flattering, I'm usually trying to grease the skids mm -hmm. to make them like me, to make to get something. Yeah. Encouragement and flattery feel totally different. Yes, totally different. Encouragement comes from a heart that I find my identity and contentment in Christ. So I'm sincerely saying mm -hmm. I had to pull the sunroof back and raise my hands out when I was listening to you worship mm -hmm. in the car. Mm -hmm. That's not flattery. Right. Um, but I, I, I feel like that's part of me maturing and being less of a people person is to go, when am I coming at somebody with flattery to get them to like me or get something I want? And when am I sincerely saying, thank you for birthing the man of my dreams, which I hope one day actually to get to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.